the one thing I was surprised about is that dude, he gets carte blanche to run the hoop at nine, ten yards, doesn't he? <laughs> no comment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I got one of my favorites, man, Kyle Van Noy. He's back in New England again, and he's like he's just balling out, man. I, he's got a nose for the ball with uh, up there with anybody I ever played with or have seen play. Kyle Van Noy, how are you today, man? You thawing out from that game last night, dude? Yeah, my face is finally back to normal <laughs> after the wind piercing it all night. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I saw the fucking – they kicked the first kickoff. The fucking ball went into the stands, bro. I know they were they were cheering. It was kind of funny. I was on the sideline. I'm like, what the hell are they cheering at? And it, you felt like it was you were in Mexico again because in Mexico you the biggest cheers come off the kicks. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You thought you were watching a soccer game? Yeah, they got excited about the kick because it almost went into the field goal. They got confused down there in Mexico because they thought they were watching soccer. <laughs> yeah, That's so good. That's the one thing I took away from Mexico, or two things. I took away how, when we played there how elite they were with their national anthem. They yeah. get super hyped. It's sick. It was very impressive. Everybody sings. Everybody's standing up going crazy. And then two is when they the kickoffs come, it, it's the loudest it is in the stadium, man, when a field goal is made. It's elite. Looks like soccer. Yeah, yeah here we go. Uh, <laughs> but they do the same thing in Buffalo. That's crazy. But, dude, I was like, we were talking about this earlier. We give out an award on every uh, every week, and we give a team a best plane ride and a worst plane ride. It usually has to do with, like, how they played and how shitty the flight probably was home or how fun it was because we've been on some fun ones, you and me. But <laughs> I figured last night I gave you guys worst plane ride First team to ever get worst plane ride after a win. I like. I don't know if you remember. I don't love flying. I would not have gotten on that flight last night. Yeah, it, it was. It was something that we didn't think about until we were in the air. And then when you're in the <laughs> air, you're kind of like, ah, you know, start thinking about the wind again. But then, um, I would say it's, it was the worst plane ride because of the way down. Uh, you're going a little fast with that mm -hmm. wind and. They're like, all right, we're landing, you know, in 20 minutes. And then five minutes later, it's like, all right, brace yourself. <laughs> There's nothing gradual about that descent. No, huh? nothing gradual with the descent. And, you know, I like to have the window open when Me I too. land. Me too, totally. I don't, I don't like having it closed. I like to see what we're doing. So I with had you. mine open. And so I can tell we're going fast. And we're coming in. We're coming in hot, bro. You know? I know. Coming in, you hear Slate. We're coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I'm bracing myself, and we land the plane, and everybody's clapping. <laughs> yeah, at like three thirty <laughs> in the morning when we landed, <laughs> you would have thought we had a party. Everybody's clapping, bro, we dude. Made it. <laughs> you know when you clap when you land on a team plane that the the ride was fucked up. <laughs> or it, there was a huge delay. Like, I try to explain to people on here that I was like, not only are they probably on a turbulent flight, but you don't get back to late. And I always feel like if you get done early with the football game, they make the flight late. The equipment's yes. behind or something. It, it, was, just like, it was, bro, because I'm, I'm, I'm throwing Slate under the bus. He was taking forever. Slate he, was taking a long he, time, he, huh? He made us wait an hour after the game. What? What was he doing? Who knows? What was he doing, dude? Who knows? Slate, he, he wore a three-piece suit. Oh, that's so what he, it was. He, he was pretty hyped coming on the plane, <laughs> or on the bus. Like, he just got done speaking to a, you know, he was just having a reverend Yeah, conference. he's a pastor. He, he, a had pastor. The, he was getting his pastor on, man. <laughs> yeah. Slate's the man. If there's anybody I wouldn't get mad at for making us late home, it might be Slate. And no one was mad. That's funny. <laughs> and no one was mad. I always tell people probably like the number one teammate that I would, if I had to scram for like a week and here are my kids, like I'd probably give him the slate first. For sure. hundred percent. For sure. Matthew Shout out slate to Slate. He's a good dude. He's a great man. Um, So like a night like last night, do you know that the offense is going to go in there and throw the ball three times? You knew, like if I had to, if before the game you had to say how many throws you were guessing y'all made, what do you think it was going to be? Honestly, it shocked me, Chris. I was tripping there, like tapping high, like what? Like, <laughs> are we watching? Are you seeing this? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. But 
I think as the game went on, you started to like, all right, like this is going to work. This formula is going to work because they, you know, they had a couple stops, but ultimately the clock was getting ran. And yeah. I, I, I've, I said this earlier when I was talking to someone was that eight points right in the beginning was a game changer. Cause it put the eight points is a lot is a lot in a game like that when it's that windy and you put the pressure on them that if they score they have to eventually they got to go for two and yep. they chose not to which was a little surprising but that's just a lot of pressure right off the bat and I was shocked like everybody else was that we only threw the ball three times I was saying this early in the podcast exactly what you said and and just that you know that. Damian Harris run early, which the guards played great. We were t- I was talking up the guards. Those guys, uh, Shaq, Teddy, Teddy like K, they were just Mike, they yeah. were great, man, and and really instrumental on a lot of those outside runs. But part of the reason you just run the ball over and over again, a lot of people were like, well, it's not an impressive game plan, but it's not yards per carry. It's the fact that you have to be perfect for an entire game tackling. And, and and taking angles, and if you take one bad angle or one bad you know bad tackle, now you're down a touchdown in a game where the wind's blowing sixty miles an hour, and that's and you can play games on your terms. And it's not that y'all can't throw the ball around the yard. I've seen you do it, but it's whatever yeah. it takes to win that week. Yep, whatever it takes, and that's what we did. I think too is how he game planned the win too because people didn't realize that in the third quarter buffalo was trying to do hurry up because they had the win mm. so they they felt a little pressure to score in the third quarter because yeah. they had the win because they knew they were going to go in the fourth quarter against the win that's incredible. The, the it game, is, bro. Isn't it it's incredible? Cr- like, it's we, crazy. We go out on the field, we're like, fuck, it's windy. And all the coaches are like, oh, what quarter are we running? Hurry up because we have the win. Like, come on now. This was the game. You had to know which direction you were kicking as a captain. Like, usually <laughs> when, I, when, I used to go, yeah, when I used to go out there, I was like, coach, just tell me literally what to say. Yep. I could fuck this up. So hey, I did, I did, I did it last year with the Dolphins. <laughs> What'd you do? I did it. Uh, uh, I deferred, but I picked the wrong way to kick. <laughs> <laughs> and they were cool about it because they, like, they switched it. They yeah. got it switched. You're probably looking at the schedule coming up, and it's going to be a pretty big game against the Dolphins. You probably can't 100%. wait. 100%. <laughs> Them too, though, because they're going to be trying to, you know. That's what they, I'm saying. They, they're going on a little run, so they have a chance to make the playoffs. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a big game for both of us, and I, I'm excited for that one just because how the first game went. Uh, feels like a lifetime ago. Especially after, you know, having my injury and spending the night in the hospital. That was fun. (laughs) What was the injury? I had a throat in my throat. You Uh, had a throat in your throat. (laughs) 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 Hey, what? Okay, so so what happened? You Somebody, like, punched you in the throat accidentally? Which is a panic-inducing thing. That makes you panic. I don't want to say it because, you know, O-linemen are going to do it, but you know how annoying it is. You know what I mean? It's so annoying. That's all Um, they used to do in 2008, just punch you right in the face mask when I got in the league. Everybody was a puncher. They They still still do it. They still, like, hit you in the the face mask to slow you down. That drives me nuts. And they get away with it. I was going to ask you about something last night, and then, you know, like – Tackling Josh Allen, it, he's a guy. He's a division rival. You've sacked him. You've you've hit I him. Ran over him by him. <laughs> yeah, you got run over by him. I forgot about that. I wasn't even going to say that. But there's I no sh- there's no shame in it because it's almost worse than than tackling a tight end. Like tight ends, they're in a predictable area of the field. You've probably closing. You're going top down on a tight end. Like tackling Josh Allen, he's more athletic than a tight end, and, and he's, he's just he's as a big. Quarterback. And he's a quarterback, and he's got so the whole that, field. That's- that's where you're thinking about the rules. Like, that's what I, like, you got to treat him like a running back when he, like, he's the own, like him and Lamar, like you got to treat them like running backs when they're in the field. But like Lamar's a whole different, and Kyler Murray put them in a whole different category, but just quarterbacks, especially you see the college kid. He, he opened up a whole can. You brought it up. I was going to ask you. He he brought up a whole can of worms doing that fake slide. Like, yeah, cool play, great play, but you're gonna like that. You just brought a lot of hits for quarterbacks, mm-hmm. <laughs> just because it's 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 almost disrespectful because you're taught as a player. Oh, if you hit, 
hit him while he's sliding, you're going to get fined for yeah. that. Any, like if it's even close. So like that, that was a whole crazy, but with Josh Allen, he's very tough because he's fast. He's physical. He has a little, some juke moves, but then he can slide. Yeah. So he's smart. That, that's tough. Yeah. And, and when you're on the sideline, when they're doing that tippy toe, like, he could cut back on you. He could so jump. Like, he could jump and try to get the first down on yeah, third that and was one. Ridiculous and, yeah, too. dude. So, <laughs> so I'm not even gonna because that's that's a referee thing. I'm gonna leave that up to them. Um, talk to me about Mac Jones and not being on the phone all week. Peyton Manning said last night in the broadcast that Mac Jones on the Manning cast that Mac Jones he had texted Mac Jones because he wanted to do a piece with Mac. And Mac didn't get back to him till Friday, and he thought he was ghosting him, but Mac said that he does not look at his phone Monday through Friday. 100%. That is Mac Jones. I'm not even shocked. Buddy, buddy's like Chris. When I tell you Buddy loves football and he's like, he's a patriot, that is <laughs> this him. This is bro. so good, dude. I love he's, this kid. He, yeah, he. I love him too. Like, he, he's good. He's really good. I'm, I've been impressed. For being 23 to handle the things he's handled, to be respectful, to, you know, get the teammates all, like he's cool with all the teammates, vets, younger guys, and just, you know, it's it's impressive. Dude, you can That's see it. That's tough to do. That's a tough locker room too, because you guys, you guys know what greatness looks like. You know, you know what attention to detail looks like. You know what it looks like to, to cut corners and, and to be green. And this kid has come across like, this kid has come across like a veteran, at least from the outside. And I wonder if there was one moment during the year that he won everybody over. I'm sure it, these things happen gradually, but a lot of times you, you win one big game, you go perform in a tough spot, you make a play that people are like, yeah, okay, we trust this guy. Yeah. What's been impressive, I would say, with Mac is it was, and I don't want this to sound bad or anything, but when Cam was out for that week, and it was like the day before we went against the Giants, he he was balling against us. Yeah. And it was like, oh dude, this this dude, this dude's good. Yeah. And his development, the way he wants to work and how and attention to detail, like you said, uh just a moment ago is impressive. And he's only gonna get better. The more he sees it, he's like, All right, I saw mm-hmm. it. Like I can diagnose it again. I'm good. Uh, the more he can see reps, the better he's going to be. It's going to be impressive to watch, and I'm very, very happy I'm on his team. That's great. That's a ringing endorsement, man. You hear that? I can tell the way Kyle loves this guy. This is awesome. Yeah. I want to play with a quarterback like this. That's awesome. Uh, hey, Judon, man, I knew he could rush. I, I feel like some people didn't really pay enough attention to him for some reason in Baltimore. I, what I like I'll about tell you it, why they didn't. Why do you, why do you think that is? He was a ro- he didn't play as much. Yeah. If you go back and see how much he played in Baltimore, they they rotate their reg, uh, edge rushers a lot. Ugh. Um yeah. And here he's played <laughs> uh, you know how that My is. My producer so. laughed cuz I'm just like I always ran about this shit like rotation's good to keep people fresh, but you need to get in a rhythm as a rusher. Yes, I'm the same way. Like I I'm I can't stand, like, it's hard for me to, like, go in and out and in and out. It drives me nuts. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes. But you, as a pass, especially pass rushing, you need to get in a rhythm. It's like a pitcher. You need to figure out, like, for me, example, I'll give you an example last night. Going against the rookie Spencer Long. He's a big kid. kid. He was yelling at somebody one week uh, earlier in the season. They had this still shot of him. He was a whole, like, torso above this little running, this little DB. He's a a big dude. And so I I was starting on the stab progression, and he knocked me down. So I was like, he he knocked it down yep. one time. And so I was like, all right. Later on in the game, I flashed it and faked him. It was the one where Josh Allen scrambled out with the penalty flag, but I should have sacked him. I remember. Um, it was just like that. If I didn't get those reps early in the game, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I totally know what you're saying. Yeah. And, and, and for somebody who has different tools in the toolbox, like we all agree as rushers, like somebody like Judon can really set things up the way you just talked about setting things up. 
the one thing I was surprised about is that dude, he gets carte blanche to run the hoop at 9, 10 yards, doesn't he? <laughs> no comment, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if not you're, go, if you're, go, yeah, yeah, not if you're going if double you digits. Here, you know how it is. <laughs> I know. Man, I won a rush one time in preseason at like 7, and Matt, Patricia kept me after, and he was like, Chris, we got to talk about this. I was like, well, I won the, I won the, one that he's like, and Van Oy and the guys are like, Chris, just just walk with him. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's a different kind of thing. Level with the quarterback. But this guy really has done great all year long. What do you think is the key to his success as a player? Like, is is it his bend? Is it his power? Is he stronger than we think? Like, watching him on TV? Like, what is it? That's That's a good question. I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's a little bit of he's he's bigger than you think he is. Yeah. Like when I met him, I was like, oh, this dude, he like he he big he big he he big boy. Yeah, and he's man, like a down lineman almost. Like he yes, can play D end. For sure, hundred percent. He's also fast, yeah. which people don't really see. But then he he has a great knack of like uh when when O linemen how they set how he reacts off how different linemen set. Yeah. He is able to use his strength moves with against that. And yeah. I think he doesn't quit. And I think that's always key as a pass rusher is, you know, he might lose a couple, but he's going to keep working. And eventually he's going to crack the code. It's like, you know, giving Tom as many chances that, you know, you've played with him. It's like giving Tom Brady the ball. Um, a bunch of times eventually he's going to score it's right. just a matter of like giving him opportunities absolutely and he's getting them and uh he's up there around 12 or 13 sacks right now so my my Good dude is him. getting buckets man and and you are one of the most complete players in the league because if you look at pbu percentage and uh and coverage and some of the things at second level like you do little things that i always pick up on that obviously i've sat in a meeting but a couple weeks ago you knocked down a crossing tight end on like a boot look and then you, you make a sack. And people don't realize it's not just the finishing on the ball that you do so well, but it's also that you bought yourself time by taking away the primary receiver, something that might not be apparent to other guys. But for yeah. you, it's basic stuff, and you're really good at doing all the little things. Is there somebody in practice, when it comes to coverage especially, that has made you better? Like going in seven-on-seven, seven, do you kind of try to get going against a certain back or a tight end that you've yeah. got a, a good groove with? That's good. I think it's got to be James White over the like my career uh, going against him. You know, you're going to get routed up. It's just it is what it is. He's are he's arguably the best uh, pass catcher out of the backfield. I would say going against him for years and years has gotten me better uh, for sure. And, you know, kudos to his career. Unfortunately, he got hurt, which sucks would love to have James because um, yeah. he's a really good player. But I would I would definitely say years and years playing going one on one against him has gotten me better over the years. Yeah, that was definitely if you had to pick one guy that's synonymous with just routing people up out of the backfield in New England, I mean he's 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 gotta be up there. And yeah. I'm I'm uh, I gotta tell you a good story about him. Uh he was routing us up one day and uh, <laughs> Bill, he, you know, it was me. Who was it? it? Was me? I think uh, Hi, Jamie, a couple other people, and he, he was killing us. And you know how Bill gets sometimes where he's like, "Keep killing them, James." <laughs> <laughs> hey, keep keep killing them, James. <laughs> and we're like looking at him like, "Man, shut up." <laughs> I need that. I need that on like a soundboard here at the studio. Keep killing them, James. I was telling a story about this earlier, and this will confirm it. Who always won out of all the alignment? Who usually won? Who did Bill want to win the races up the hill? You know that hill? Do you still race up that oh hill? Oh, my God. Who does Bill love when when they win the race out of the O-linemen? Right now? Well, I remember my year well, was Shaq. It used to be, I feel like it used to be Shaq and Tooney. Shaq by a nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who's winning them now? That. Who's winning those races now? 
What if I said Trent? I would be, I would be like, he must be the best athlete of all time, bro. Dude, Trent's balling. Did you see some of the blocks he had last night? Man, come on. Oh I saw gosh. I saw some of the blocks he had against Cleveland, and I was like, man, they're going to be running the ball this game. Uh, that whole <laughs> yeah. right side of the line early in that game was just caving people in, dude. Speaking yeah, of physical fine. physical football, you have um, you got a bye week coming up, and if there's if anybody, hallelujah. <laughs> So you say hallelujah. I was telling the guys earlier in New England, they really work in their bye week. <laughs> so I kind of feel like give me a shot of Toradol. Let me go play a game on Sunday <laughs> over a it's bye changed, week. Like, bro, it's changed. Oh, you guys are hanging Different. out on bye weeks? Hey, we're, we might be big chilling this week. Jeez Louise, dude. But I, yeah. So I was going to say, when you look at the schedule and you see that bye, what do you think it is? Well, this year is different, though, yeah. uh, Chris, just because we played Monday night, so they don't have an extra day. Oh. So we had to have you have to have today off because of the uh, CBA rules. I like so, that. And then you have to have the four days off on the weekend. That's mandatory. So it kind of there's one day, you know, there's only one day and you can't really can't really practice, right? No. We'll, we'll find out if we're practicing. I don't know yet. Oh, my so, God, dude. It's I'm, a mystery box. Hey, you Reed, know? I'm you out. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm going back. I'm going back, bro. Schedule, I'm going bro. back. I'm, I'm getting on. I'm getting in the transfer portal right now. I'm going back because they're <laughs> That's not. going to be wild. Bye weeks are seriously a break now, dude. So he's on his bye week. I want you to enjoy that. It's a cushy-ass bye week nowadays these guys get. And uh, I want you to finish strong, buddy. I was so excited to see you back in a patch uniform. I I know, I know it probably feels like a really cool reunion, but even for, uh, for a guy watching you on TV, it's just such a perfect fit, dude. It's just a perfect yeah, fit, dude. I appreciate it. And come back again. Go win a Super Bowl, dude. We got to make the playoffs first. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good New England answer. <laughs> Did you enjoy the video? I mean, if you didn't enjoy the video and you're here, like, I don't know what to tell you. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.